Hello, beautiful people. This quote of the day is very interesting because a lot of people can relate to it. When you think back on the first person you've ever loved romantically, who comes to mind? Go ahead and think back. How old were you? Most people would say in their teenage years, whether it was 13, 19. Most people met the first person they've ever loved romantically as a teenager. You see in the quote, it says, in your teens, you love fearlessly. So let's talk about it. You could be a teenager right now. You could be your teenage years could have been 20, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. When you think of that first person, you have experienced this intense feeling that was greater than just you liking someone. What did you do? You broke rules. You were rebellious. You were bold. You expressed your love verbally and physically. You weren't afraid to tell a person that you love them and tell them how much you feel for them. You weren't afraid to hold hands in public, to kiss in public. Everyone knew you guys were an item because everything about you two screamed, we are together. In our teenage years, we love fearlessly because we do not know pain, hurt, disappointment, feeling broken hearted like you think that person in front of you as a teenager is the very best thing that you ever cross path with although this can actually turn out to be true most people do not end up with the very first person they've ever fell in love with in their teenage years the thing that I admire about the teenage years when you first love someone, fall in love with someone romantically, it's the purity of the love. It's so pure because it's unstained. It's unmatched because it's the first. There are no boundaries. There are no restraints. Just free, free. Moving on to in your 20s, you love unconditionally. When you fall in love in your 20s, it does not look or feel the same way it would have or it did as a teenager. Because by the time you get into your 20s, you've already experienced some type of disappointment in the game of love. And I say game because... It's a gamble. Love is a gamble because the same person that you fall in love with can be the same person that you grow apart from or want nothing to do with. So it is a gamble because you never know how it's going to end. People evolve over time and you can easily fall out of love with someone you fell in love with. So let's talk about this disappointment. The disappointment can vary from Having a boyfriend, a girlfriend, as a teenager, that person broke up with you, you broke up with them. They met someone else and wanted that person. You met someone else and wanted that person or you felt like, no, we shouldn't be together. We're not good for each other. That's the levels of disappointment. Or it could be something as simple as you liking someone and thought that it was heading in the right direction and then you realize that it was not. So that's disappointment so when you enter into your 20s and you fall in love in your 20s you love unconditionally because now you are fully aware that there can always be possible disappointments so now you have to love and you also have to trust that that person will not disappoint you right that's a heavy cross to carry but we carry it anyway for thousands and thousands of miles. There are people that can say that in their 20s, they wasted time with people that they should have dropped a long time ago. 
because in your 20s, that unconditional love, it makes you keep repeating patterns that you would have never repeated in your 30s, that you would have never repeated in your 40s and so on. Generally in your 20s, you've given chances after chances to the person that you're in love with, right? In your 20s, you cry the most tears because of the person that you're in love with. And if you're not crying the tears and you get broken hearted by the person that you are in love with during your 20s, that can break your spirit. It can literally break your spirit and some people never come back from it. In the game of love, it's almost like in your 20s, you are a punching bag, right? And you form armors. That's why when you meet some people in their 30s, you realize that they're damaged. It's because they've formed armors from their experiences in their 20s. And if you're the one doing the heartbreaks in your 20s, going around breaking hearts, making strong connections and just hurting people, it's going to catch up to you. It will haunt you in your 30s or 40s, especially in your mid 30s because you are going to look back and you are going to see wow I'm in my 30s now why can't I meet a woman or a man that was like this person that I met in my 20s no because by the time people get into their 30s they already have all these armors they're already protected and numb You can't get that again. So then you keep reflecting on the one who got away in your 20s. So now here you are in your 30s and you're loving selfishly. How did you get to this? You got to this. You get to it. As I explained, you get to it from your 20s. So now you have either or all have been used, abused, damaged, and broken. So when you have those past hurt and pain, you start to put yourself first. Things starts to happen on your time, right? You are first. If you are dating someone and you see that it's going in a direction that you don't want to deal with, you remove yourself from the situation. Because you're choosing yourself first. You're cautious in whom you give your time and energy to because you were putting yourself first. That's you loving selfishly. The loving selfishly is not you loving someone else selfishly. It's loving yourself in a selfish way to where you are not considering the next person because of the pain that you've had. So in your 30s, It seems like your self-love is magnified because it is. Your self-love is on a high. Let me give you an outside example of loving selfishly in your 30s. It's like for women who, you know, went to school, went to college. You know, they're successful. They put their career first. Entrepreneurs. Whatever it is that their career can give them success in, that's the focus. But when they get in their 30s, whether it's the mid or late 30s, and they want to have children, they're most likely not going to stick around with someone that they're in a relationship with or whatever kind of situation ship that they're in. They're not going to stay around if you're not willing to give that to them. They're choosing themselves. They're loving themselves. They're choosing, I want to start a family. So I cannot be in this if you can't give that to me. Even if the person already has 10 children or even has a strong belief or feeling of not wanting to be a parent, they don't care. It's just all about self. Here's my biggest concern for people in their 30s that were broken or damaged in their 20s if they have not healed from that pain they can enter and end their 30s and even begin their 40s 
with never feeling a spark with anybody that's in front of them. No matter how good, how wonderful that individual is, they will never feel that emotional spark that they did in their 20s or even in their teenage years. And to me, that's a sad life to live. I strongly believe that the only solution or the number one solution, I should say, to getting that spark going again is to go back to the beginning where it first started, right? In the game of love, you have to go back to loving fearlessly again. You have to put yourself back out there. You have to put your emotions back out there. You have to put your heart back out there. Everything, your mind, your trust, your spirit, you got to put it all out there again in order to overcome that numbness. In your 40s, you love internally. And I want you guys to take a moment and understand how deep this love is. By the time you enter your 40s, you accept that there is no perfection in the game of love. As a result, you will connect to your inner peace. You will find peace in your 40s in understanding that love is not perfect. You have already broken hearts. You've had your heart broken. You have reflected on people that you should have taken seriously. You have reflected on people that you have wasted your time with. And you've reached a place in your life where you are okay with that. It's okay. So therefore, that internal love is what binds you to the peace that's inside. So pretty much in your 40s when you love internally, that is you forgiving yourself. That is you accepting things about yourself that you've been through. Like you actually accept it and that brings peace. When you've reached a point in your life where you can forgive yourself for things that you've done to people and things that people have done to you, that is internal love. That is loving yourself internally because you're no longer beating up yourself. You're no longer suffering. You're, You're no longer allowing yourself to be hurt or sad or unhappy about these things. So that's where the internal love comes from in your 40s. And in return, loving becomes easier. It's not the same in your 30s and it's not the same as in your 20s. It's easier because of the forgiveness, because of the internal love. In your 50s and beyond, you love in the form of companionship. People who marry late generally don't marry for that teenage love, that 20s love. They're marrying for someone to be next to them and to be with them and to finish out life with them. If you are under 50 and have felt loneliness before, when you go into your 50s, loneliness has a new definition. It is so much greater than what you could imagine if you are still single. This is why you will see people 50s and older getting animals, purchasing a dog or a cat. It's because of that loneliness. They need the companionship. That's how they love now. Companionship is the way that they love. Well, guys, it's time to wrap this audio up. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. Feel free to comment. Let me know your thoughts. Even if your life didn't go according to the quote, even if you got married as a teenager, or even if the only person you've ever been with in your life is the same person that you're with right now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Until next time.